Today, I will be presenting a discovery set of the brand called Argentum Apotheceri, which means silver pharmacy. Argentum Apotheceri has a skincare line with a silver hydrosol, but I will not be talking about their skincare today. Today, I will be talking about their fragrances. And these fragrances are very unusual for many different reasons. And I don't think you've tried anything like this before. First of all, the brand was founded by a woman from South Africa. They are London-based and they use technology that is called water plant emulsion that was patented in France. And not only their products are plant-based and are from 93 to 98% natural, but they have absolutely no alcohol. So this is amazing news for those who are allergic to alcohol. Maybe you have tried J'adore by Dior, the fragrance that is called J'adore Parfum 2, the perfume of water, because they also have this uh, technology that Dior claims to be exclusive to Dior. This technology is a mix of water and plants. The fragrance really feels like a lotion, like a very luxurious but very thin lotion. And unfortunately, it doesn't last longer than any kind of lotion. Argentum Apotheceric gives a very similar experience. Their emulsion is also milky color, but most of their fragrances last longer. In any case, they are supposed to be good for your skin and hair. We got used to the idea that uh, perfumes are sold with the concept of uh, being beautiful, confident, sexy. Here, they are not selling that. They are selling spirituality, being balanced and being in touch with yourself. And they do it through the tool that is called archetypes. If you're interested in the concept of archetypes, I will let you find it online and read it yourself because it requires some extensive reading. But briefly, I can tell you that the concept is rooted in the idea of historical psychology and different types of character. You can also find out your archetype by doing several tests that are easily accessible online. But archetypes are not really rigid. So you can be a mix of several archetypes and uh, combine several traits in your own unique personality. In this video, I will just give a very brief description of each archetype. But another thing I wanted to mention is that usually archetypes are presented by the image that is normally self-explanatory. Here, they decided to have each archetype represented by an animal. And I will get into it when I will be describing each perfume individually. So let's start. There are 12 archetypes and they are split into four categories by element. Honestly, I did not really understand why some fragrances were attributed to one element versus the other, because I don't really associate the smells with the elements. And the same with archetypes. The archetypes are not associated with air, fire, water or earth. I will start with a category of air. And here we have three fragrances, creator, sage and ruler. Creator is probably one of my favorite fragrances of the entire collection. The archetype of Creator is usually represented by a geeky scientist. And the characteristics include being imaginative, full of new concepts and ideas that you want to bring to life. Argentum Apotheceri, they add optimism and self-expression to this list of characteristics. And their Creator is represented by a bird. The samples have very unusual design. First of all, look how the packaging is made. Here you have the main notes and here you have a detailed description that includes more nuances of the fragrance. And the bottles also look very unique. Here is uh, how the sample looks and they're all two mil vials. The thing I did not find very practical is that it's very difficult to open them. They are super, super tight. And when you open them, you can actually spill them and there is no spray in here. So here we go. You open the cap and you immediately see milk-like liquid. And this is also very unique for perfumes. I don't advise you putting it on your clothing. It really should be put on your skin and hair. I usually prefer my skin. So Creator is a perfume that I liked from the very first sniff. The opening already gives you so much complexity. 
You can catch very delicate and not overly sweet apricots, which are described as asmanthus, in fact, by the brand. And then immediately you get oranges. And these oranges make me think of uh, Christmas time, when they have these hot alcohol drinks that are either rum-based or hot wine-based, and they always put oranges and uh, lots of spices cloves, cinnamon, and this blend of spices and oranges is something I really enjoy around Christmas time, and this is something I'm getting in here. The mix of spices is kind of generic, you cannot really uh, distinguish individual spices, but they are slightly sweet and green at the same time. And what I love about this mix is that there is a balance, and the perfume continues progressing and developing. Moving towards the base, the perfume becomes multidimensional, and I'm thinking, which path should I take? On one path, I smell black tea wood and benzoin, and on the other path, it takes me to the direction of very soft, smooth suede. A little bit spiced, a little bit buttery, and when I start going into that direction, I discover some oris butter. And the combination of suede and oris butter is just so great on my skin. And at that point, I'm thinking, do I regret not taking the direction of tea? Because the idea of tea and oud is still lingering somewhere around that soft, smooth suede. This is a kind of complexity I found in the Creator fragrance. The next fragrance is Sage, and this is the archetype that is usually represented by an old wise man. And the main characteristics are knowledge, awareness, and wisdom. According to personality tests, this is the archetype that is about 70% of my own personality, and it is particularly close to the way I feel about myself, but it does not mean that I particularly liked this fragrance. From the beginning, it uh, smelled more like the perfume of the 80s, the mix of heliotrope, ilang ilang, and violet that is more typical for old-style perfumeries, did not impress me so much. But when I let it settle on my skin, I started liking it a little bit more. When that aura of the old uh, perfumeries diminished, what I had left on my skin is a woody powderiness. So I started enjoying it more, maybe 30 minutes after wearing this fragrance. So despite that uh, sage is my archetype, this is not the fragrance that I would choose out of the 12. And the last one that we have in the air element is called ruler and ruler is represented by a deer. Usually the ruler is represented by a king or queen. This is a person who is in control. This is a person who is a leader, a person who takes responsibility and charge. This is someone who has integrity and honor and can lead the way. My personality tests also show that I have ruler in me, although this is not my dominant archetype. And the fragrance actually surprised me quite a bit. This is a spicy tuberose. It is not a kind of scent that I would associate with ruler as an archetype, but what amazed me about it is that it actually could be appropriate for gentlemen. And I don't know any other tuberose uh, fragrances that are gender neutral. The only spicy tuberose fragrance that I know that is very popular nowadays, especially during fall and winter months, is Interdit by Givenchy. But Interdit has a much brighter tuberose. Here we have uh, airy hints of tuberose. It's like tuberose is blooming somewhere very far. And what you have is a mix of ginger and lemon that is really, really so juicy. It's like you're making your vitamin cocktail fresh squeezed ginger and lemon. And I really enjoyed that mix. So I should probably not say that this is a tuberose fragrance. I should probably say that this is a lemon ginger fragrance with a hint of tuberose. This would probably be a more appropriate description moving from air to water and here i have three fragrances jester lover and innocent as one would expect from water element these perfumes are pretty low on the scale of my intensity i would say this is probably the most delicate element in this collection and the one that i really liked is a uh, cold lover as an archetype lover is associated with romance seduction and pleasure here they decided to make an emphasis on real romantic love when two lovers look into each other's eyes and recognize each other. And of course the image of swans 
could not represent this kind of love better because these animals are the most faithful creatures in nature. They form couples for life and they stay together for many, many years. Is not it romantic? And of course, what could represent romance better than a rose? And you know very well that I'm not a fan of rosy fragrances, but I did like the way rose sounds in here. According to the description, we have a rare Iranian rose essential oil. What I liked about this perfume is not just the rose, but also the transformation of the rose. My nose could not detect the notes that made this transformation, but when I read the description, it started making more sense. At the beginning, we have the rose that is mixed with geranium, and that's the part I don't like so much. But when the rose starts mixing with raspberries, and very beautiful soft mask, that's where I find my lover. And it's not the first time that I notice that rose becomes more likable to me when there is raspberry present. And with a dry down, it gets only better. I do not get so much pepper as the description suggests, but I do appreciate that musky base. This is probably one of the best masks that my nose knows. When the flowery element is very, very delicate, but the musk comes to its full bloom, this smells like satin sheets to me, a place where you just want to make love. So the perfume is really matching its name. The next one is Jester, and this is the archetype that is probably among the most difficult archetypes to understand. On one side, this is someone who is playful and cheerful, who is always making fun, who is in the center of attention. But at the same time, this person has a shrewd mind and courage to make fun of traditions and societal norms. And therefore, he is not always liked by everybody. It's like a clown who is crying alone at the corner after his performance. Jester is represented by a seal juggler, which makes sense since it's a water element, but the scent is very far from watery notes. And while I do understand the complexity of Jester as an archetype, I had a lot of difficulty understanding this fragrance. If you look at the description, there are a lot of interesting citruses in here, but I could not enjoy citrusy nuances. Overall, it smelled kind of pharmaceutical to me. It's like a bitter pharmaceutical liquid sweetened with something orangey. I could not really identify the herbs, but I did like the dry down. After three hours of wearing it, it uh, became a very nice woody skin scent. But at this point, it was no longer radiating. So unfortunately, I did not appreciate the citrusy variety of Jester, but I think some other people might. And the last one that I have in here is called Innocent. Usually the archetype of innocent is represented by a child who is pure and a little naive. This is an archetype of a person who is uh, full of optimism and moves through life with humility and grace. As I said, it is pretty delicate and it is dominated by the note of green apple. But it's not a green apple like a fresh fruit. It's more like a green apple that I find in soaps, shampoos and shower gels. And that bitterness that uh, is supposed to come from almond, I associate it more with soap. It's not annoying, it's quite delicate, but I start liking the fragrance a bit more when that soapiness and green apple diminish, and instead I start getting something like aquatic floral. And at the end, I really like the dry down. When it becomes a skin scent, it smells like a skin of a baby that just came out of a shower. Really beautifully and uh, very, very thin. The next element of the collection is Earth. And here we have three fragrances, Everyman, Explorer and Caregiver. To be honest, these three, actually this category, is the only one that makes sense to me because I do associate these three fragrances with the Earth element, which actually is probably true for the entire collection of Argentum Apothecary because most of the fragrances, they have this aura of uh, something woody, herbal, slightly medicinal in a way. That's why I would associate practically the entire collection to the earth element. My favorite one in here is every man. As an archetype, every man is just an average person, someone who doesn't want to stand out, someone who just wants to blend in in a crowd. At the same time, it is a person who is very relatable, nice, friendly. What animal would represent trust and friendship better than a dog? 
And as a fragrance, the description did not excite me so much at the beginning, but it actually is among my favorites. The perfume has amazing balance between herbal side, woody side, sweetness and bitterness. And the effect of it is deriving from the combination and balance of these notes. It actually makes me feel very calm and balanced inside. I think this perfume is amazing for meditation, for moments when you need to feel in touch with yourself and calm. I perceive the notes a bit differently than in the description. To me, it feels like sage swimming in milk, but sweet milk. There's some sweetness that I don't even know from where it's coming. The notes on Fragranatica are a bit misleading because cassia is actually a tree with yellow flowers. Also, we can find mimosa in here and narcissus, a yellow narcissus. So that uh, blend of uh, sweet yellow flowers is just creating a really nice aura, balancing out earthy oak moss. And oak moss is a tricky note, and here I actually love it. I feel it quite a lot from almost from the very beginning, and that woodiness is present definitely at, at the base, but it actually is amazing and slightly sweet. That's why I think this is a really good representation of earth element. The next fragrance is totally different in its style and it is a archetype that is called Explorer and here it is represented by a leopard. It is very easy to guess the characteristics of the Explorer. This is a person who does not like boredom, who gives away daily routines to search for new horizon. Someone who is very brave, independent and searches for freedom not only in his life but also inside him. Therefore, this scent is associated not only with freedom, but also with personal authenticity. And as a scent, it has a forest with exotic spices. And one of the spices that uh, comes out immediately to my nose is cardamom. And I love cardamom in uh, many different combinations. Here, it's really uplifted with the spicy black pepper. My tests show that I do have an explorer in me. When it comes to the scent, I would attribute it more to the male side. I do love spicy fragrances, but I think uh, there's a bit of a too much of spiciness in here for me, despite that I do find it really well balanced and very enjoyable. Unlike the other fragrance that I think um, is a bit harsh for me. And this one is a caregiver that is a, represented by an elephant. Usually caregiver is represented by a female figure with a child because the characteristics of this archetype include being very compassionate, self-sacrificing, very competent, multitasking, and of course, very kind. But I don't associate these qualities with the smell that I'm getting in here. As a smell, it actually is kind of harsh. And my first impression was that it sounds like a cheaper fragrance of the 80s, but uh, very loud and uh, a bit annoying to my nose, to be frank. But at the same time, I associate this smell with my grandmother because she did like this kind of perfumes and she was a very caring woman. So this is a nostalgic scent for me, but it is not something that I would wear myself. And the last element that we have is fire. Here I have three fragrances, Magician, Hero and Rebel. And unlike water, that was a very delicate element, these fragrances are more intense. They are probably the most intense fragrances of the collection. None of them impressed me from the beginning, but the one that I actually learned to like is called Hero. Hero as an archetype is represented by a lion in here. But usually, Hero is a warrior, someone who has extraordinary stamina, who is very disciplined, and he is always ready to fight for truth and to protect the weak. It has a lot of notes that I'm usually not a big fan, like cloves and incense, for example. Also, patchouli uh, could be quite tricky for me. But the element that is dominating the fragrance, and the one that I really liked, is agarwood. In an hour or so, when the perfume settles on my skin, I get the scent of agarwood that uh, feels like dry chips of wood, really, really woody, and I really liked it the way it smelled on my skin. It leans a bit more masculine, but uh, it could be potentially great for layering with something more feminine. The next fragrance of the fire element is magician. Fire and magic. Yes, I do see that association. As an archetype, magician is associated with transformation. And of course, butterfly is a great symbol of transformation as well. 
Magician could be somewhat confused with the creator, but magician is someone who is close to nature and cosmos at the same time and uh, creates new energies, while creator is more of a scientist. And as a perfume, this one is made for lovers of myrrh. I do love myrrh, but sometimes it could be a little bit too spicy for me. And this is the case in here. And not only it's myrrh absolute, that sometimes feels a bit like wood and peppermint, here it is uh, even more uplifted with some spices and woods. Overall, it is a beautiful smell, slightly more intense than I would wish for, but I do like how it dries down on my skin with some magical, magical cedar wood and very beautiful amber that the brand describes as sensual amber. I don't really like wearing it on my skin, but I think I would go crazy for it if I could smell it on a man. And the last fragrance that I have in here is called Rebel, represented by a snake. I recently discovered a category of fragrances that is called poisonous and this one does sound like a poisonous kind of perfume. Once again we have some myrrh in here but then at the same time there are so many very intense elements that they really compete with each other. There is a wood and leather and they really try to pull this fragrance into so many different directions and at the end it's pretty intense resinous but I don't really enjoy the result overall. But I think this big mess of different notes is coherent with the characteristics of the archetype because Rebel is a person who denies all the conventional ways, who is full of fire and passion for building something new. Maybe we don't see this new yet, but it is a, a symbol of revolution, blood and fire. So this is the most fiery and the most intense fragrance of the collection. And then the last perfume that I have not spoken about, but uh, this one is associated with every element and it is called Become. This is number 13 perfume of the collection and it has a special philosophy behind it. So let me read you what it's about. Masculine blends with feminine intuition, the pursuit of beauty through balance, place of harmony and love. Patchouli is something in the base, but I immediately get that this is a patchouli fragrance. I also get the bitterness of bergamot, and it feels kind of aquatic at the same time. It is kind of strange to think of it as an aquatic fragrance, because all I get is patchouli and bergamot. But after getting acquainted with other perfumes, I start feeling that it's like a sage that is uh, swimming in uh, water. The description is supposed to have sandalwood in the heart of this composition, but to me this sandalwood comes out only at the dry down. As most of the fragrances in here, I love the dry down of it much more than the opening. I think Become is a very good wrap up of the collection, very good representation of it, because it is the most herbal one, not herbal in a bad way, but herbal in a medicinal, meditative and calming way. And I use this moment of conclusion to say that one person could combine different characteristics of different archetypes to become someone unique and someone on his own. So try these perfumes, see what's closer to you and enjoy being yourself.